All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, obviously, you recognize where I'm at. I'm still out on that lake. Uh, I was on for the bass plopper video, but uh, a lot of you guys were asking for a tackle tip Tuesday: um, how to fish the slender spoon, uh, that ice fishing spoon that everybody has that seems to only get used in the winter time. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to use that in open water. All right, like I said, today is all about that guy right there, Slender Spoon. I'll go into detail and how to use it, and uh, hopefully we get a bunch of fish on it. It's been a while since I did this, actually, but it is a go-to for searching for big panfish. So let's go. Okay, so here's the first tip I'm going to give you with the Slender Spoon. It's 15 feet of water, well, 14, 15 feet of water, but I'm looking at tall weed tops here and with gaps like that in them. So I'm just kind of drifting along right now. I just shut my motor off, so I'm not moving very fast. But that's what you're looking for in your uh, kind of starting point to get on the bow. Uh, if you have a trolling motor, you can do what I'm gonna do here. Otherwise, just drift. Okay, so I got this uh, 2.5 inch, so two and a half inch gulp minnow. Uh, I think it's in, yeah, emerald shiner. And then the slender spoon I'm using today is like a 1 16th ounce. Uh, it's got the treacherous blade, but I think that's called the nickel finish or whatever. Real simple. Look the minnow through the eye spot and Let's try and catch some fish. There we go. What did I get? Might have found the crappie out here. Look at that. So that's what you get when you drag that slender spoon around over the weed tops. You'll find fish like this on a regular basis. Nice 12 inch crappie. And that's why you use the slender spoon. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you this real quick just so you get an understanding of kind of what I'm doing. So I have this slender spoon attached by a snap, and then way up here, you can see it. So I add about a 24-inch uh, leader, basically, to the snap, and then just a red treble. I, I think I switched that treble out, and then this is like half of a 2-inch gulp worm or minnow because they weren't biting the whole thing. Uh, I was getting bites on a regular basis before, but what happens is they'll short strike it. So that's something you guys got to uh, kind of play with and learn yourself when you're using these things. Um, sometimes they won't uh, hit that hook if you have too long of a tail on there. Uh, worms, these, every kind of plastic that you can think of that might be your favorite plastic could work on here. So keep that in mind. Vicious gill.
Waiting for one of these guys to show up. Seeds love this thing. Just wondering what they've been up to. These are the guys that are fun to find when they're uh, another three inches bigger. They pull like a horse. Okay, so it's getting pretty rough out here. I'm going to probably call it. I hope you guys get some understanding here. Uh, one thing I want you guys to take away from this is the way you work a slender spoon is very slowly, extremely slow. Uh, to the point where it feels like you should speed up because you feel like you're gonna drag bottom, but um, here. With this setup, with that little tail and that setup on there, the way it floats down through the water column is almost like a, like a countdown jointed Rapala, I guess you could call it. But the, the upside is, is it's got no limitations. So like, you can reel it in a little bit faster, it'll, it'll stay up. Uh, you reel it in even slower, then slow, and it'll go down. Uh, you can even bounce it off the bottom and stuff like that. Um, my favorite way to fish it though, when I'm looking for active fish in the middle of summer, is you get out on flats or like gradual drop-offs, stuff like that, and anywhere between 10 and like 20 feet. Uh, you can fish this, all you gotta do is go very slowly. Uh, my favorite way to fish it, and the, the way I discovered it, was actually, I was trying to vertical jig, but it was too windy. So I ended up drifting with it, and I noticed that if I let line out, I could keep it down by the bottom. So, you know, you had to leave so much line out. Um, but as I would speed up and it would come up into the water column, I would get a ton of bites and catch a ton of fish that way. And the cool thing was, is this is before I had any flashers or sonar or anything like that. So like, if you guys got a kayak or a canoe or something like that, throw a slender spoon on, put the tail of the gulp minnow on there and just drift. And then you can find yourself some fish. Um, if you have a phone or something like that with GPS on it, you can mark your spot. Otherwise just kind of eye up, well, eye up everything and basically, you know, triangulate yourself from where you're at on the body of water you're fishing whether it's a river creek or pond or lake it doesn't matter um you can go back and repeat it just keep drifting over the same area uh, just kind of get used to how much line is out and all that stuff and how fast you're going control your drift and yeah you can catch some fish too on the slender spoon so i hope today's tackle tip tuesday really helped you guys out I got some big waves coming my way real quick here, so I gotta, gotta cut this short. If you're not new here, you know what's up, but if you are new, please just remember to